I put down this bottle, but I'm afraid of the wind. Um, I fear the wind. No. Okay. This next poem is called uh, One Frozen Weir River. River. And it's sad. So be sad. <clears throat> Never. There are soldiers playing on the ice because their mothers won't let them back inside. The snowy beach is black with shoe polish, but they are hungry and eat it anyway. I spend the afternoon sitting in front of a bench with no paint, a broken tree bone. My wife watches us through a thin white curtain, marbled with charcoal like Japanese rivers, but they're veins, she says. The shivering armies take turns getting married and going to war for us, rows among rows. We can't help but hate them. War made us empty the house of its organs. In memoriam, we packed our things and never left. Out on the ice, a private dies and comrades watch his body slide across the river wrapped in branches. We can't take it anymore. Later that night, from her perch by the window, she sings to the soldiers, hide from me, hide from me, like a blind siren, unaware she's perched on their bodies. Thanks. That's a drink for every poem. Um, you deserve it. Thanks, Connor. <laughs> Two, hey. <laughs> Drink every time idea. he says All right, this is my... I couldn't afford it. Um, okay, so they don't sell liquor in Denton either. Like, what the fuck is that about? Um, so this is my last poem. It's long. Uh, it's about not coming to terms with mortality, and I wrote most of it at Big Mike's. And as such, it's actually dedicated to somebody who's not here, Eve Spade, a wonderful woman. Um, and it's called The Day Before We Burned Down the Whole Goddamn City. Motherfucker. <laughs> 9.43 a.m. Eve's birthday feels like Sunday on Friday, and I think she knows. She celebrates by buying gallons of orange juice to pour in her bath so she can soak up the sun long into the night. Her fiancé looks forward to this all year and is often seen the next morning with pulp in his hair. 11.34 a.m. You are no virgin, Eve says as she spills vodka in my tea, rind dangling between her lips in anticipation. I swear, if I weren't a poet, I would slap you silly, I mutter. And we both laugh as steam shouts out, shoots out and gouts behind her, foaming the air like ghosts from a faucet. 2.02 p.m. Philosophers burp fruit in a circle behind me. They came to the conclusions that words were a meaningless obstacle hours ago and have since resorted to subtler means of communication. Apple means consider the lowly mule. Strawberry, ah, but what of Descartes? <laughs> Mango means you insufferable fool. And bananas, ah, oh dear, where do I start? <laughs> Orange, of course, means I agree, but they never eat oranges because citrus gives them terrible gas. 4.25 p.m. My grandmother goes on and on about how irritating it is to hear people call dull things mundane. It means of the world, mundus the world. The world can't be boring. Not yet. Her husband, a parrot, repeats mundus for the rest of the evening, pointing at forks, light bulbs, flowers, coins, shoes, my shoes, 6.06 .06 p.m. It's a sweaty evening, full of shakes and bad taste, and I'm hungry. I taste cigarettes between my fingers. I taste gin on my nails. I lick, sweat, I lick my sweat, and it tastes like someone else's sweat, and then that, too, tastes like cigarettes. Eventually, I taste smoke in everything and settle on chewing my tongue as it struggles to tell me, we're dying tonight, and it's already started. 7.50 p.m. Eve tricks the philosophers into her bathtub and drowns them, screaming, you are the scourge of hard-working fiancés everywhere and you never tip. <laughs> and of course, they couldn't agree more. 
9.14 p.m. Our grandparents realized they turned 30 several decades ago and, bored with the world, start filling their shoes with gasoline and taking their morning walks at midnight. 11.47 p.m. In the middle of the town square, surrounded by paper mache in various favorite phases of life, ticker tape infancy, parade float youth, sweet pinata death, we meet. Eve arrives sticky and haunted, her shoes sloshing in solidarity with the amalgamated old. The philosopher's ghosts gurgle with interpretations, causing the air to smell distinctly durian. 12 a.m. In these, our darkest moments, we moan that there are too many years and we go through them too fast. On this alone, we agree, even as we are all on the verge of death. We believe in beauty. We believe in wanting more from life than beauty. We believe in idiocy. We believe in wanting all the idiocy life has to offer. My friends, I will not look away from your tragedies. I will open my eyes to the whole of the world and be amazed at just how much I can ignore. But for now, pass the matches. Thank you. <laughs>